Black History Month was created in 1926 in the United States when historian Carter Godwin Woodson and the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History announced the second week of February to be Negro History Week. Since the 1890s, black communities celebrated the birthdays of two people considered to have a big impact on black history in the United States, Abraham Lincoln, February 12th, the American president that issued a preliminary emancipation proclamation that declared all enslaved people be forever freed in 1863, and Frederick Douglass, February 14th. After escaping slavery, he became a national leader of the abolitionist movement to end slavery and famous for his anti-slavery writings. In 1915, Woodson traveled to Washington, D.C. to participate in a national celebration of the nationwide emancipation. He was inspired by experiences from his trip to create an organization to promote the study of black life and history. Soon after, he helped to form what is now known as the Association for the Study of African American Life and History. This association in 1926 sponsored a National Negro History Week. Choosing the second week of February to coincide with Lincoln and Douglas's birthday. This inspired schools and communities nationwide to organize events to celebrate. The first Negro History Week was met with a lukewarm response, gaining the cooperation of the Department of Education of the states of North Carolina, Delaware, and West Virginia, as well as the city school administrations of Baltimore and Washington, D.C. Woodson felt that at least one week would allow for the general movement to become something annually celebrated. He realized the subject needed to resonate with a greater audience. Woodson contended that the teaching of black history was essential to ensure the physical and intellectual survival of the race. If a race has no history, it has no worthwhile tradition. It becomes an unimportant factor in the world and it stands in danger of being exterminated. By 1929, with only two exceptions, officials with the State Departments of Education of every state with considerable black population made the event known to their teachers and distributed official literature. Churches also played a significant role in the distribution of literature, with the black press aiding in the publicity effort. Throughout the 1930s, Negro History Week countered the growing myth of the lost cause of the Confederacy, that blacks were better off under slavery. When you control a man's thinking, you do not have to worry about his actions, Woodson wrote in his book, The Miseducation of the Negro. You do not have to tell him not to stand here or go yonder. He will find his proper place and will stay in it. Throughout the following decades, Negro History Week grew in popularity, with mayors across the United States endorsing it as a holiday. Black History Month was first proposed by black educators and the black United States student at Kent State University in February 1969. The first celebration of Black History Month took place at Kent State one year later from January 2nd to February 28th in 1970. By 1976, Black History Month was being celebrated all across the country when President Gerald Ford recognized the month during the celebration of the United States Bicentennial. He urged Americans, seize the opportunity to honor the too often neglected accomplishments of black Americans in every area of endeavor throughout our history. 
Black History Month is observed in the United States and Canada in February. Ireland, the Netherlands, and the United Kingdom celebrate in October. On February 22nd, 2016, a 106 year old Washington, D.C. resident and school volunteer, Virginia McLaurin, visited the White House as part of Black History Month. When asked by President Obama why she was there, McLaurin said, Yeah, that's what I'm here. That's right.